Hi there, just read this disclaimer please. Hi there guys, um, so a little while ago I was asked how I chose my investment trusts and uh, it kind of stumped me a bit to be honest. <laughs> Struggling to remember actually because quite a lot of them were selected quite a few years ago so I was just trying to think back as to my thought process at the time. But I think I just sort of um, heard interviews maybe from certain trusts um, just heard discussions about investment trusts where certain ones might have been mentioned and then I probably sort of looked into them a bit further anyway regardless I'm struggling to remember the thought process to be honest of my earliest ones but what I thought what might there was no kind of set process you see there still isn't but what I thought might be useful is actually just a source of source to show you, talk you through some of the sources of, of information if you wanted to create your own process based on whatever information you feel is relevant because you know I'm not I'm not a good investor anyway so why listen to my process let me just give you the information you can make your own choices based off that information so obviously the best I mean this is only a recent find for me I don't know why it's it, it is the actual what does AIC even stand for Association of Investment Companies I think so the AIC's website is very good for getting information and um, if you go to this area, I wonder how you even get there from, I've just got a link that takes me straight there. I'll oh, find, I think you, so if you went to the AIC's website, you'd click on find companies. I think you just click there, to be honest. And it takes you to this. Um, so obviously here, I think, I think by default it just shows all of them in a list. And obviously there's different pages. And then you can sort it by these different things. So if you wanted to sort it by dividend yield, you'd click the little down arrow there I imagine it's going to come up with some very unrealistic high dividend yield here and um, so uh, well 94% yield look at that no idea well our VC venture, venture capital trust I think that is a high yield probably because it's actually more of a capital return because I think I think these venture capital trusts have like um, have a certain lifespan they don't sort of go in perpetuity they kind of eventually just pay back all of your capital I think anyway I don't, I don't fully understand it so you can sort it by various things so if you want well that would be a good one to sort it by wouldn't it if you believe that past performance is a indicator of future performance and you can see there oh well, that's good Scottish mortgage and then two tech ones that are very similar to Scottish mortgage but the Scottish Mortgage obviously has non-tech stuff in as well, which is obviously why these two don't do better. But I guess Scottish Mortgage is more diversified. And Lintel Train is pretty much like owning like 50% of one company and then the rest is a portfolio. So that is really an outlier. It's not, it's not really a proper investment trust. It's really, it's like owning one company and then, and then a fund separately. So you're, you're it's going to have high returns and then low and possibly low returns if, if the company stops doing so well. That's the investment manager, Lintel Train itself. Um, anyway, so there's you know you can sort it by there, or you can go through different sectors. So if you were only interested in global equity income, for instance, you can filter it by global equity income. Good ones to go for. That's how I ended up. Well, it's not how I heard of it, but. As you can see, there's not many options there, is there? So I've got two of the uh, six. We're International and Henderson International. Um, so then if you go into one of the companies, you can get all sorts of info on them. So an overview just tells you a little bit about them, I suppose. It's got the dividend history, and if you click in here, you can get a much longer dividend history as well, which is quite useful sometimes. That goes back to 2012. Um, it gives you dividend cover, so that's the number of years worth of dividend that they have in the revenue reserve, and then that's the same number but in millions of pounds. Uh, it gives you the various, you can then go to the performance and charting and see how it's done compared to its rivals. Regular viewers would have seen this before on my various videos. You can click. But it gives you both, it gives you the whole sector, obviously not done as well as the whole sector, global equity income. 
If you only care about the share price, you can just get rid of the navs. And you can click more data. See how it compares to a uh, UK income paying trust. You can see there that over five years it's done better than City of London. Over ten years it's done better than City of London. Yeah, UK's not done so great. But anyway, yeah, that's how you can do that, and obviously you can change the timeline if you want to do if you want to kind of do two specific dates, which is what I was doing on one of my previous videos for my monthly update, or you can just do it roughly by doing that doing it like that it's kind of a quick way of doing it and what's good about this chart compared to most other websites is that it's the total return this includes the dividends being reinvested whereas most other charts like on Hargreaves Lansdowne for instance it's just the share price so you could have a low dividend yield paying investment trust showing massively outperforming a high dividend yield paying one but actually the truth might be that the dividends if they're taken into account the truth might be that they're similar performers not likely in today. Not likely today because mostly the the lower dividend paying ones have done better recently. But that's not necessarily always going to be the case, is it? Uh, other info you can get into info on the charges here. So it goes into more detail because normally you just get this number, like a one percentage fee. But actually they're normally more complex. They're normally things like this: 0.65 percent, up to 250 million. And then the fee reduces to 0.6 in excess of 250 million. So they're normally more complicated, but on, on the likes of Hargreaves Lansdowne, you normally just get this one number. So you can get a bit more detail about the charges there. And then you can look at the portfolio. It gives you a breakdown of the portfolio by geography, by asset class, and then the top 10 holdings. So there's one website you can use to get information. And then another one I like to use is Hargreaves Lansdowne. So you can get info like where well you get info like if you click there it gives you dividend cover which is different to what what was the wording on this one different to this dividend cover same wording oops this dividend cover is how much is in the revenue reserves for the for to use in the future which has been built up over year after year after year or or taken out of depending on how well the year is but this is the dividend cover of that one year so this means that actually the revenue the dividends and whatever other income they get was six percent higher than the dividend they paid us of 26p so i imagine if you did 1.06 multiplied by 26 that would give you how much revenue the company gained per share that year financial year ending january 1 9 and then if you if you go into this part of it which is the same as clicking so it's the same as clicking there you get a little table that's different then you get some percentage increases like that um, it's kind of nice to see when I'm choosing a dividend um, an investment trust for income in particular I like to see the recent increases in the dividend and this gives you a good way of seeing it as a percentage um, but what I also do is I collate all the information in, in my own spreadsheet here so as you can see I've got I managed to get historic data for that shouldn't be calculated yet because it's not had a full years. I managed to get historic data. I think it was from Stockpedia, I think I got it all from. Um, but you can get it from the websites of the investment trust as well. So I could see the history from 2002 onwards. So the most most recent one I got the data here for a merchants trust. Just so that I could see how it was how it had done in the past. Um, because you know it was, a, it was a high dividend yield so I was a bit nervous about buying something because these were the years recent years of low dividend growth I think it's just, just nice to see the history of how the dividend has grown or otherwise um, that's partially why I was quite keen on Lowland because it, had, it hasn't done great on um, capital returns for Lowland LWI but look at look, the dividends have done really well though They've, they're in the tens hovering around 10 percent increases each year which is a massive increase really uh, but it's just not doing great is it in general like in capital terms anyway so that's one thing i do to kind of 
decide which one to go for. Oh, and I have here, I record the RPI just to compare each year, because obviously that's the important thing. If you're living off the dividends like me, it's the comparison between that number and that number that matters. Uh, what, what else do I look at? Um, oh yeah, so all the sources of information are the actual website of the fund managers themselves. Normally just Googling it finds it, but like if I like, for instance, merchants I'm using at the moment as an example, I just went and found their website. There's normally a disclaimer. And you can just find out general information. Problem is it's different every time, isn't it? Because it's, you know, they're all different websites. Like I think I went here to get that historic information about the dividend. Yeah, there's a chart. Unfortunately, there wasn't a table, so I just kind of hovered and wrote, typed in the numbers, I think. I'm sure there's a better place to find that info. Um, and I think actually for this one, there's actually a podcast, I think, for Merchants Trust. Well, the actual place I listen to it is on my phone. I use Podcast Republic, um, podcast player kind of thing, and I, I listen to it there. But I think you can find it on the website as well, somewhere. Where is it? You, you get the odd video from them as well. Our track. Where? Somewhere, how? Somewhere here. Literature and resources, it must be there. Broadcast Hub? Yeah, that could be it. That could be it. Like I say, it's easier to listen on a phone, though. You don't need to sat, be sat at a laptop listening to a podcast, do you? Here we go. The va a Value View, episode 12. There you go. Hello, and welcome to A Value View from the Merchants Trust. So basically, I think it's once a month, they um, someone chats to Simon Gurgle, who's the manager of the Trust. You can get some updates and see what he's thinking and then obviously for I have little links to all the different sites here each month city each month the um, city of London and Lowland they give little notes sort of giving you a summary of what's happened just a few paragraphs really not much but I think you can kind of sign up on their website to get like um, alerts when they update you Fact sheet there. Cumulative performance. Oh, there's another sort. There's the dividends for Lowland. In the top ten. Actually, for I've noticed actually you can view full holdings for all of these um, Janice Henderson ones. If you click view full holdings, I think it just gives you a spreadsheet that you can. I mean, I don't think they've put much effort into it. They've just given you a spreadsheet. So you can open it up. And you can get all the details of every single hole in there, which I don't know, Woodford can't. I think Woodford regrets giving us all of his holdings in the end. It played against him, didn't he? So, But it's not like they're advertising it. You have to scroll right down and find it there. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, I know Lowland and City of London do this little spreadsheet, but I don't think many of the investment trusts do that. And I think you have to kind of work the spreadsheet to, yeah, there's no percentage. You have to kind of work it out for yourself to get them in order of, you know, the holding size. Oh, but then you'd, you'd also have to kind of put those two together, for instance, because they're the same company, but two separate share classes or whatever the phrase is. I don't know what it's called. And Scottish Mortgage's own website. I think actually no, I think they give you their full breakdown of their portfolio as well. If you go there, performance and portfolio, you click portfolio, full portfolio evaluation, you can click there, and there we go. There's the whole lot. Oh, and it's no, it's not sorted. It's alphabetical, but they give you the percentage of each holding. But you know, obviously stuff like that is different for each trust depending on who manages it and you know you'll, you'll get different information for different one for different trust and then obviously what I've shown before is this Investigate website where you can get the announcements from the uh, from any company like dividend, dividend declaration um, I mean you can also get to the like half yearly updates like that or half year sorry half year reports and things like that um, sometimes they put it all in so you can just read the half year report here 
sometimes they've put a link to it, but you can get to the yearly reports on the individual website. So Janice Henderson's is down here at the bottom. Annual report 2019. So you can, I think it's normally in a PDF file. Yeah, it's obviously quite big. It's taken a long time to load. You know. Get all sorts of information in the uh, annual report. I mean, this is the uh, half yearly report, isn't it, that I'm, at, that I'm in here for City of London. But if you scroll to the right time frame, you'll normally find it here as well. Annual financial report. So you don't have to keep checking. So, you know, if you check, periodically check, investigate for announcements, you'll, you'll see when the financial report comes out. I don't know, I tend to read, I don't know which one I read really. No, I tend to read this one, I think. I think I find it easier to read um, text like this. And I can I can use this little uh, thing on Firefox where I go to like a reading. It's e This is like formatted in a way which is easier to read, I find. It's a nicer colour and it's easier to read when it's in the middle of the screen rather than tracking your eyes all the way across the screen and then going to the next line like that, you know. And you can undo it to go back to the normal way. Now, this for Janice Henderson anyway. I've this is another thing that I kind of do. You know, if if it suits if it suits me. But I signed up for alerts on Lowland, obviously because they own them. And I got this email, January twenty eighth, telling me that the um, AGM was happening at twelve thirty, and I can watch it here. Um, so then if I click in here, the reason I've gone to the email is that when I was just browsing the website, I couldn't actually find this page. Um, so as you can see it there, janicehenderson.com slash en-gb slash investor slash investment trust live forward slash. Um, so if I'd clicked there at 12.30 on that day, I could have watched this live. I could, this is the one that it's talking about here, Lowland Investment Company, and I could have, and I watched it. I think I, Actually, I don't think I watched it live. I think maybe a few hours later I watched it afterwards. And I think, well, I'm not sure. Let's see if it still works now, a few months later. If you click there. I, I've got a feeling sometimes they don't stay there the whole time. Oh, what's going on here? I thought it was going to take me to another page. If I maximise it. Let's turn the volume down. Good afternoon, everyone. Do you please wave at me if you can't hear me at the back? So yeah, even a few months later you can watch the annual general meeting. I think, hmm. so this is all a bit different to how it was when I watched it a few months ago. Ah no, the, sorry, yeah, no, I'm wrong, yeah, all the buttons are there, so you can like mess around with it, you can switch, you can either look at the manager speak, or whoever's speaking, or you can do it the other way around, and I think you can... Or you can do it like that and you can toggle the size of which one. So you can either watch the presentation or the person speaking. Not much point in looking at the person, is there? You might as well just look at the presentation. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, which is nice, you know, you get a proper insight. You get, you see all of the, the people who have turned up to the meeting in person. You see them all ask questions and have their questions answered. And actually, I think on the day... I could have typed in a question on 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 Tut web and got it answered live if I wanted to. I might try and do that next time something happens like that. Um, and obviously it does it the same for all the other ones as well. Um, but yeah, to get those notifications, I created a login and I kind of selected what to choose. It's not great, but it worked. Now I'm. I've not actually looked for the other ones, so I'm wondering whether there's a similar thing for Scottish Mortgage, for instance. Annual General Meeting, there we go. Second quarter 2019. I don't understand that. Watch the film, 55 minutes long. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Annual General Meeting of Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. There we go. So it seems like maybe they all have something like this. I'm going to look into that. No, I think that's about it, really. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.